So, have either of you ever chopped off an arm? Not that uh, I remember. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? Ourselves or? Yeah. Uh, what about a head? Uh, no, still got mine. Uh, no? The original. No, oh, you haven't lived. Safe to say, though, that if you did do one of those things, you could just grow it back. N- uh, no. Right? No. You know, much like the doctor, capable of regeneration. Oh. Uh-huh. Much like the doctor, much also like um, planarians. This kind of worm that in a lab has been cut into 280 pieces and each one of them regenerated into a whole new worm. Well, okay, uh, question, uh, question, question. Mm-hmm. Why specifically 280? I guess that's how many did they, they could cut it into before it got a bit too small. Decide. It's a nice round yeah, number, like... Jen. It's not a round <laughs> number, is it? You can Usually... divide it many ways. I think it's, I mean, okay. If I'm going to be doing some cutting up of some worms, and I get to 280 cuts, you're going 300. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to push forward to 300, <laughs> right? Like, like I'm not I... I'm not going to sit there and go. I think 280 is enough. My I think I think I'm, is... I'm, I'm, I've stopped here, and I, I'm going to I'm just going to just gonna fold my arms and stop cutting up the worm. Maybe 280 is as many is is 280 as many pieces as they could cut it into. I don't think so. I I feel like, mate, just in a very practical sense, like they had a knife to be working with and these things are pretty small. So actually, if you want to see one of these things um, wiggling around, I have a little video for you. I think they're pretty cute and funny when they wiggle around. Look at him go. Look at him. Oh, that is cute. Go back to the beginning. That's an even better wiggle. Look at that. And this little Check guy little can just thing. regrow from any little bit and yeah. grow into loads of them. Bas- basically, yeah. Um, which begs the question, how? We didn't even comment on the axolotl. Can axolotls do it too? There will be more axolotls. Okay, okay. I'm glad we have more. There will be more axolotl. Because <laughs> um, there's axolotl of them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, very similar to planarians, um, Hofstenia, which That's there nice are word. there are loads. There's loads of photos of these online, but they are like copyright images. So here we have a nice little stipple drawing. Hofstenia. <laughs> Did it's you another do kind strange? of worm. I didn't do this. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's another kind of worm, otherwise known as the three striped panther worm. Ooh. I think. Because they have three stripes and they live in a similar place to panthers. I, I think I, that's the reason. Um, Hofstenia, very similar. Another kind of worm. You can cut it into a bunch of different pieces. It's going to regrow. So the mechanism by which this happened, this can happen, as you would expect. Has which been, uh, <laughs> Has been much studied in recent years. It's pretty cool, we yeah. Would we would quite like to be able to regrow an arm. If I wouldn't mind one it. Off. Maybe not my head, but like arm, think, fingers, definitely. Give me that. I don't think. I don't think I'd want to regrow an arm. If you I think I'd want. Arm. I'd want a cool robot arm. Mm. Uh huh. Yeah, valid. Yeah. Why yeah, would you, you go don't... for? A, why would you go for a flesh arm? The problem is you gotta. It's it. Like, it can be really uncomfortable and painful having. Yeah. Uh, the idea effect? of having why, 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 why don't we put the effort scratch, instead of trying to regrow good. limbs? Why don't we put the effort into making comfortable prosthetic arms that can also shoot laser beams? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. So, the, but it raises a few questions, right? If you've chopped either one of these worms into a bunch of tiny pieces, Hofstenia, I don't think they've done anywhere near as many, but just because they haven't. Only two hundred and twenty. Not necessarily because they couldn't, just because they haven't. They chop them into like four pieces and then do what they're going to do with that. But um, it raises a few questions about how this ha- it is happening. Firstly, um, how do the cells regrow? Where do they come from? What happens there? How do they know that they have to regrow? And 
how do they know which body part they should grow into? Right, like how does a cell know that it's in the back half of an animal and it needs to make a tail instead of that it's in the top half of an animal and it needs to make a mouth opening? Well, I guess I guess really the question is, much like Cotton Eye Joe, uh, where do they come from and where do they go? Mm, mm. Where do they come from, Cotton Eye Joe? Um, Shit. So... Do have a good chart? You... <laughs> yeah, so we've seen, right, we've got these two very similar animals doing a very similar thing. Um, but actually, here's the planarians on our phylogenetic tree. Here are our Hofstenia. They, like, could not, like, and here, this is us. Chordata, that's where you find our, like, vertebrates, right? So... These these two types of worm last shared a common ancestor 550 million years ago. Their last common ancestor was like one of the first animals to have bilateral symmetry, right? They could not be less closely related than they are, despite the fact that neither of their lineages have like a tube that goes all the way through the body. They're ba- they're, they have one digestive opening. Food goes in, food comes out the same hole. Right, so they're like... Imagine pooping out your mouth. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so they're like, on the surface, very similar, but actually very distantly related. Right. Um, but examining Convergent evolu- con- Convergent e- convergen evolution. evolution baby. That's the huge question, because loads of, the, loads of um, families in between, not including vertebrates, but loads of families in between have this capacity to do the same thing so it means Mm -hmm. so the question then we ask is is this something that's evolved loads of times um or is it something that evolved once a long time ago and that lots of lineages have lost the capacity to do yeah so is everyone else really special or are we really stupid is that the question (laughs) and the answer looks very likely to be we're really stupid Uh so it seems that this capacity to regenerate with all, with those three uh, different, like those three questions that I've asked, how does it know that it has to regenerate? Uses the same genes in both of these very distantly related worms. The question of how does it know what to regenerate? Again, um, like the the muscles in different parts of the animal express like genes for location basically Mm -hmm. um that work in the same way in in both of these very distinctly related worms and then how does it do it it's using a very different type of a a very similar type of cell peewee cells which um are found basically like across the whole body they're found across the whole body and then they can like even probably migrate when there's an incision. They migrate mm. to that area and um, and mm. reproduce rapidly and create the new part of the body. So this is a really old, very cool thing that animals have evolved to do. So is there a similarity between those kinds of cells and stem cells then? Like how... Yeah, so they're both pluripotent cells. Right. Um, but there is a difference in the kind of pluripotent cells that they are. So as you can see, Chordata, That's which me. includes us. Just like me. That includes us. It also includes like amphibians. It includes birds. It includes all of, all of them. Uh, all of the vertebrates, fish. Um we don't have a lot of the same characteristics that are required for these two kinds of worm to regenerate like the whole of their bodies if they need to and i will put links to like lectures and stuff in the description because how they do it is super interesting but i'm no expert but like axolotls you may know that like, if a gecko gets its tail cut off, it can regrow that tail. Yeah, a- axolotls 
like lots of other salamanders, but I think they do it partic- axolotls do it particularly well. Can do that with like loads of parts of their body. If they get mm. their leg chopped off, they can regrow their leg. They're also right. in Minecraft, so without <laughs> any like visible scarring, they don't really form that scar tissue they just grow oh. the new limb instead of forming scar tissue they grow what's called a wound epidermis and that wound epidermis tells the cells that are behind it what to do and how to grow so in those wormy things that we've looked at they have these generalized cells all over the body that are just waiting really and they're constantly regenerating in the same way that our skin cells are constantly regenerating they're constantly right. like fixing little things here and there and turning into but um but they can be ready when there's a wound in vertebrates that's not really what happens so much as um your muscle cells and or your like the nerve cells continue to grow I say you're as though you're the gecko. The nerve cells continue to grow, but the muscle cells and skin cells kind of revert to um, like a blasteme, a neoblast form. Um, so they revert into one of those more general cells and then like re differentiate as they right, grow. Right. Um, but they're not. Um, they're not as pluripotent as like a stem cell or as the pubic cells that you find in the worms. Um, Do you want to hear my favourite thing about... Do you want to hear my favourite thing about scar tissue? Okay, go. If you ever get scurvy, all of your scars reopen. It's fucked up. That's really fucked up. And that's your favourite thing about scar tissue. It's it's very, very hard to do that. (laughs) It's obscenely hard to do that nowadays. Like obviously the the famous famous people that got scurvy, right? Pirates. Yeah, right. What do pirates do? Got into sword fights. Yeah. Mm. So it was a big thing on uh like seafaring vessels where they, they would check people for scars and not um and, and reject them for employment frequently because there was a risk of scurvy and the scars just opening up. So <laughs> they were they were actually quite careful about I don't know whether this is common knowledge or because I only learnt it yesterday. But axolotls are like basically permanently juvenile yes. salamanders. Yes. Because uh, at some point one of their yeah, ancestors yeah. must have had like some kind of thyroid issue that just meant it didn't yeah, develop out of the larval stage. Tadpoles, basically. Yeah, but they can under very specific circumstances they don't typically live very long after they like mature but they can mature into things that basically look like salamanders but Mm. also often juvenile salamanders are sold as axolotls so do axolotls have to mature before they can reproduce or can they go through their whole life cycle in that sort of juvenile stage i think they reach sexual maturity but a lot of their juvenile features are retained right right yeah, that's really interesting. Um, yeah, so axolotls can do it. Geckos can do it. Geckos do it, like, almost on purpose, constantly dropping their tails off. <laughs> Silly buggers. Um, Naughty boys. Fish can do it. Uh, zebrafish are, like, being researched extensively because of the way they can regenerate heart muscle, heart tissue. Oh, that's um, cool. And so, obviously, we're pretty interested in, because we are really bad at regenerating heart tissue, we form scar tissue, which, you know, is, right. preserves some structural integrity, but really doesn't work very well for a heart that needs to be flexible. Zebras are also um, really good at um, stopping traffic to enable pedestrians to pass safely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. True. <laughs> um, so what's what's the utility of that for a zebrafish? Like, why does a zebrafish specifically need to be able to regenerate heart tissue? Mm, good question. That I would they know take the an answer awful to lot of cocaine. It's more. not good on the heart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They just go really, really fast. It's like, it's like, holy shit. 
<laughs> but they're, but fish. The fish greater can... parties, amazing parties, <laughs> a bit but they're they're like they are always up for it. <laughs> but fish can regenerate lots of different kinds of tissue. They can regenerate like um, scales and and stuff if they need to without uh, forming as much scar tissue as like. As other kinds of animals. Birds can't do it. Mammals can't do it. Birds can't do it and mammals can't do it. Which is why people are kind of surprised to discover that alligators can up to a point. It doesn't sound it doesn't sound that wild to think that alligators can if you also know that like some kinds of lizard can, because you think, well, they're fairly closely related. But actually, alligators are more closely related to birds than they are to any. Yeah, that's like, other kinds Alli- of reptiles. Because alligators are really old, aren't they? Really old, related to dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are the oh birds wow are dinosaurs. Um, so they're, they're more closely related, related to, to birds than to other like yeah. reptile species. Yeah. Did, did you know that um, huh. alligators? Are actually they've actually got feathers. It's just that in movies they they take the feathers off so that it sort of conforms <laughs> to cultural stereotypes of the alligators. <laughs> yeah, I like that. that. <laughs> um, that's new to me. <laughs> um, they can regrow like up to nine inches of their tail, but without bone. So they don't do it that well, but they can do it. So again, oh. this is a case where we're the losers, right? Like. In a very literal yeah, sense, we've lost this ability. We can regrow some stuff, though. I I can cut my hair; it'll it'll come mm. back. Yes, you know? yeah, yeah. But you're not yeah, regrowing so it; you're are, just constantly. If you cut that. a bit these off my like, liver, it'll grow a little bit, a little yeah. bit back. So these are those some stuff like very specialized kinds of cells in in the human body that can do that regenerative process Mm -hmm. whereas in other animals there are much more general cells that can right general cells do that but actually uh you're right we can do that with uh some kinds of body parts like our hair and obviously when you're a baby growing in the first place that's like all that stuff you're you're growing you're growing in that way Mm. in at the at the earliest stages of life so it's just like other creatures just maintain the ability to do what we are all doing as fetuses. Yeah. So, yeah, if we look back at our first slide, you may Quite remember that the doctor... Yeah. <laughs> you may remember that the doctor, when he's just regenerated, he or she, or they, I guess, mm. all sorts of doctors these days, um, when they've just regenerated... Doctors they, can be anything now. Uh, they can, like, lose an arm and then grow it back. So yeah, um, I remember that happening. Yeah, uh, this is fighting hands. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, we can also regrow fingertips. Or what I've seen is that children can. I, but I well, have could have no used real a reason to less believe unattractive that... photo. Of <laughs> <laughs> If you lose, or at the very least, if a child loses a fingertip, um, if it's not sewn up and they have a significant portion of the nail bed left, they can regrow the fingertip because there are stem cells at the base of the nail bed. Oh, um, I mean, how, that are capable young, of doing. How young are we talking here? Good question. I don't know. The article that I saw said. We know that children can, but it didn't say that we know that adults can't. So I'm actually okay. unsure. So a few just like words of advice for our audience. Don't deliberately cut animals <laughs> like reptiles or amphibians. Don't watch this go buy a salamander and chop it. Don't chop your fingers off. Those are my two like key yeah. requests. <laughs> Different all, of these, of anyway. all of these cells that he's expressing genes, right? Yeah. Are they going to put Levi's out of business? Yeah. 